Welcome back to a new video here in Slavi. This video is part two of the basic motion graphics. If you haven't checked out part one, make sure to do that before and then come back to this video. If you don't want to do that, well, then just stay and enjoy this video. This video, we're going to be covering the second portion, which is going to be making our ghost or our character here using the polygon and shaping that. And then I'm actually going to leave the part three, which is going to be the last little part, which is going to be a shorter video. That way, these videos are not that long. So let's just get started right away. In the first part of this tutorial, we managed to create these eyes. So what we're going to do next is create that little ghost animation that's going backwards. OK, now the first thing I did was I brought my fusion composition here into the timeline. You can double click here and just work in this one if you want. But in this case, I don't want to change too much on this one. So I'm just going to bring this one here. And then if I like that, I can bring these back in here and save these with a different name uh, once you have your animation ready. But in this case, let me just erase that. And we're going to get started with this one right here. So we're just going to right click and go into Fusion. Here in Fusion, if you want to you want to right click here, make sure that the high quality is off just so that when you're working, uh, it doesn't take too much of your resources. And you can also go to playback and then change timeline proxy to half resolution. And that's going to make it go down here. And you can actually deactivate the render cache if it's on automatic here too, if it is necessary. OK, let's get started. Now, in that first animation that we saw, we have that ghost and the whole screen is of that color first. For that, what we have to do is we're going to create a background node here and we're not going to see it on screen yet. But we're going to press two here and we can go here and create a different color or the same color. In this case, I want to do a sort of like a pink ish ghost just to make a family, I guess. I don't know. But in this case, we have these here and we can add a polygon here to these masks. So we are going to create our background. Now, the easiest way to do this again, we're going to first rename these and just name it ghost ghosty, I guess. And here on this one, we can do the same thing that we did for these first ones, which is we're going to create an ellipse because that is going to make it easier to create our shape here of our ghost. You can select everything, move it down to where you want it to be. It doesn't matter too much in this case. And we're going to deactivate here the animation. And what we can do here is we can actually just bring this three points all the way down here so that we are making it a little bit longer. We're going to bring these higher. So it's sort of like a weird shape of, I guess it looks like an egg in this case. But in this case, we're just going to bring those two from the sides down and we can get rid of these one by just erasing it. Now with these points selected here, we can hold control and then we're going to just move one of the of the curves here and do the same thing for the other one so that it's not that pronunciated. And in that case, we can actually move it a little bit more if we want. And then what we can do is we're going to add the waviness effect to the lower part of our ghost here. And for that, we're going to select this mask here and we're going to press Control and Spacebar and we're going to add a waviness node. Now, by default, it's going to be added as a mask. So if you just hold Shift, it's going to disconnect. Now you can connect that first mask that we have as the background to the waviness and now it's going to affect the whole thing but we don't want that unless you wanted to do that effect so for that in order to only affect the lower part we're going to add a, a rectangle here and we're going to connect these to the waviness now with the rectangle we can bring this down like that and right now it looks weird because of the waviness is set to vertical once we change it to horizontal it's going to look like that and if we animate the scale it's going to um animate the amount of like curves or waves that it happens. And if you just want to leave it automatically, you can just click animate here. And sometimes it will by default animate. Sometimes it doesn't. So what I did for this one is the easiest way to do this is by animating the, the scale or the face. So we're going to go to zero and we're going to start the face at zero. And before that, I want to actually adjust this a little bit more. So I want to bring this a little bit lower and then bring this a little bit higher there. And you can play and tweak things as much as you want in this section. Now here in the waveness, what we're going to do is we're going to create a zero keyframe here for the face. 
and then we're gonna go to 24 which is one second mark and we're just gonna go a little bit and try to sort of like guess where it will cr be create a good nice loop i think i did it well enough there it looks like it's at the same point of the beginning pretty much pretty accurate i would say now here we can create the loop again like in the previous video i showed you we're gonna go to the spline tool and with that one selected we can actually press f to smooth these out if you want if you don't want and if you want it to be more linear you can just leave it as default and then we are gonna set the loop here and now it will continuously animate that there's a little bit of a twitch tweak there it seems that is because of the way that it uh that we got our animation there so we have to change it a little bit more again and then we're gonna create our loop and that looks perfect okay that looks fine here now we have the first part of our goals pretty much ready the next thing that we need to do is we're gonna add a transform node to open that selection tool uh, press Control and spacebar. I always like to remind you of that. And then we're gonna connect our merge, our transform node to this merge node right here. By default, it's gonna look at these as the foreground. So we wanna press Control T, and then that would change this to be the background. And we're not seeing anything on screen because we have these on our screen here. So then we can press number two on the merge node here, and we're gonna see this weird thing. <laughs> and it's kind of funny how it looks like now, but it's not the intention of it. So what we want to do is have the full screen. So we're going to increase the size of this transform node and bring it all the way to like until it covers the whole screen. You can leave it at five or 4.6, whatever, depending on your shape, depending on how you make your shape with the polygon here, how big or small, then the adjustment of the size will vary with that. Okay, now the next thing what we want to do is we want the ghost to animate backwards, right? So for that, we're going to start the animation here at frame 20 so that we don't have to make a longer fusion composition. So in frame 20, we're going to create a keyframe for the size and for the position, which is the center right here. Now, a few frames forward, like 34, that will make it 14 frames. We can bring this down. And then we're also going to add the position, make it a little bit higher like that. Now we'll see our ghost going backwards like that. Now, the next thing we need to do is we're gonna create the eyes becoming smaller. Now, because the eyes here and our body here is, they are not connected together. That's why we have two separate animations for them. If you want, you can create a one with only the transform, but you will have to make the eyes smaller in here first. And that will just add a few more steps to the process. So in this case, this is probably the simplest way to do this. We have the ghost moving backwards. So now we have to do the same in this merge node because when we create a keyframe here, only the foreground is going to be affected, which is the green side here. So we're going to go to the transform and see where the keyframes are. So at 20 and 34. And in this merge node, we're going to create a keyframe for the size and also the position and then go to frame 34 and then adjust it so that it looks the way you want it to. It doesn't have to be like human size or natural. It's up to you, right? You move it a little bit like that too. Now they're both moving together and we can select both of these and then go to the spline tool with both of those selected. We can press Control A so we can select all of these and then we're going to press F and then we're going to press T. And here we can adjust the ease in a little bit and then also the ease out. So it's a little bit smoother and has a little bit extra touch of movement. There it goes. Now, there's a few details that I haven't added yet, which were the drop shadows that we did. For that, we're going to have to create two different drop shadows. One is going to go here for the eyes. If you can skip this step if you don't want the eyes to have a drop shadow here. And we can adjust and play around with the different settings. It's up to you here. And then we can actually just copy the same shadow and we're going to paste it here in, in, next to these transform nodes so that it applies to our shape or our ghost figure right here. You can play around with the different details. And now we have these like that. Now, the next thing that we can do is here when the ghost is moving sort of like 
up and down a little bit in the example that we have you see it's sort of like bouncing a little bit instead of having to create a whole different transform node you can do this in the merge node or the easiest way and to make it more independent will be to create a transform node right here and then when the ghost sort of comes to the position here which is 34 is when it gets there we can start a position keyframe here and after a few frames like let's say like 10 frames bring it down a little bit we're not seeing it right now on screen because it's on the merge node so you're gonna make sure to press 2 here so we can see it on this main screen and then after 10 more frames we're gonna bring this back to 0.5 now if we look at this it's sort of like that and again we're gonna create a loop for these starting from here we can press f to make it a little bit smoother if you want and then we're gonna set the loop and let's check that out okay we have our loop ready in that case now the whole thing is pretty much done if you want to make the whole animation become a perfect loop so how we had it at the beginning there's a few things that we need to do first is we're gonna have to adjust our eye animation because in the other one in the example i show you the animation starts with the eyes closed so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and we're gonna select two and so we in this merge node so we can see all of these happening everything that's happening here and we can bring the size of our eye down here to zero and the same thing for the curves so that it looks like the eye is closed and then a few frames forward which is going to be like two frames uh, we can bring our settings up to the point where the eye is open again and selecting these two we can press shift s to make them smooth now I, our eye looks a little bit flat in that top part so we can adjust that by making it go a little bit higher so we have that perfect circle again and if you don't want to have to create that animate that by hand or like bring it the shapes what you can do since we had that first keyframe here already we can actually go to the spline tool and we're gonna fit this to screen first and we're gonna make this screen a little bit bigger and we're gonna erase these first and then we're gonna hold control and bring these here to frame two so now the eye is gonna open there now after that we're gonna have to make a little bit of a fix for our loop because when we have our loop created like that it adds a second blinking section right so for that we're gonna actually just select these here without that first loop that we have here and we're gonna have to create also another keyframe for the eye border which is right here on the border width so it waits a little bit and now selecting everything we can activate our loop again by doing that and now we have the uh, the pupil issue with the loop right now for that to fix we're gonna have to go to the pupil we can select control here holding control so that it doesn't deselect these two and now we can click here to see uh the on it like to not be able to edit these there we're gonna lock the edit and we're gonna select the pupil so we can see that and in order to fix our loop what we have to do here is we're gonna have to select these three here that we have here because they are not aligned and moving these a little bit to this side so they are aligned we are basically gonna be fixing our animation here now this video is becoming a little bit longer so i'm gonna put a stop here so that you can follow these steps and on the next video which is gonna be part three i'm gonna show you how we're gonna create that eye uh, or third eye sort of animation that covers whole screen again so that our loop can start over from the beginning pretty much perfectly we already set the eyes in a way so that now we don't have to worry about these if you want you can edit things here so that they are not looking too sharp but once the loop is pretty much ready it's gonna be barely noticeable so yeah you will check you will see the result of that in the next video so make sure to check that video out well i hope that you enjoyed this video and make sure to come back and check part three of this video which i'm gonna be dropping sometime in this week hopefully and i hope to see you in the next video here in suave bye